Hi guys, I've spent the past three weeks listening to the entire discography of an artist known as the Student GoBot Union. Yes, that's their name. From what I managed to figure out from listening to their discography, they're like an enigma wrapped in a nutshell, wrapped in something else that's gooey and I don't even know. But this was quite the interesting journey to go through. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the discography of Student GoBot Union. And if you like what you hear, in the description down below is a link to their band camp. I think we'll start things off first of all by saying that Student Gobot Union is only available on band camp. And at first I was wondering, why is this? Why aren't they on Spotify? Why aren't they on anything else? Do they have a mild presence on YouTube? But other than that, just really Bandcamp. And I was like, why is this? And basically, the whole premise, I feel, of Student Gobot Union is to cut up samples from popular things and then put them into music backing. The music itself kind of instantly reminded me of... <laughs> so allegedly, all the way back in 1996, there was an album made called I Feel Like Arthur, which has references to the show. Not all the songs are about Arthur, so but there's a kind of concept going on here. T.W. Hey! felt like a 90s kind of throwback to uh, commercials and things like that. So I started to notice things were kind of off with Student Cobalt Union. Shit. All right, here we go. I got it. Ready? One, two. Oh, oh. I'm it says it's by Grant T. Fresh on the top. So is it by Student Gobot Union? Is it by Grant T. Fresh? I'm not sure. It, or is Grant T. Fresh? Is he Student Gobot Go Union? Now, when you look at Student Gobot Union's um, information about each album, you kind of get more confused. So this album has a Bible quote of Jesus expelling a demon from a, a man who had an evil spirit, who then subsequently sent the demons into some nearby pigs who drowned in a nearby lake. Uh, that was from Matthew 8:31, And it apparently it was the inspiration for, and it says Christian alternative rock album. When you listen to this, it's not a Christian alternative rock album. It's more of the same loop stuff, loop stuff, loop stuff, loop stuff. I've been doing research, research, research. I've been doing research, research, research. I've been doing research, research, research. Now today I'm not going to take you through the entire 19 projects that SGU has, just because it'll take a lot of time. But I will highlight the main albums. There's also singles involved. Some of the singles appear on some of the albums anyway. Moving on to 2016, we have an album called What If A Millennium Could Talk. And if you look at the description, it says, if our work were restaurant chains, this album would be Chipotle. Chipotle, Chipotle. You can get the impression from a lot of the projects that SGU does is that they are short burst quick pieces of work that are instantly like sent out into the world and mastered uh, with maybe a more carefree attitude to creating the song. You can see why these wouldn't be on Spotify, can't you? There's too much copyright going on. <laughs> mm, behold, a decree from King Student Robot Union. It reads as follows. Ye fools who enter. There are some tracks throughout this discography where I feel like the artist behind SGU is actually singing on the tracks, but because there's so many different voices going on and I don't get all the references, I don't know who the real SGU is. We then go on to an album called Happy Birthday from SGU. I think this is the first of two birthday projects that SGU actually has. This is Gangnam Style 2. They call me the bee's knees because I retreat at I am It's a vast improvement on Gangnam Style 1, isn't it? I do feel like this might be SGU himself, but I don't know. I really like this one. Apple Chris was a, a standout to me. This could be SGU. 
Thank you for a chance to man. I think I preferred it when I the master things were more raw, down to earth, contained, not just loop stuff for two minutes. Bastard shit. I went to McDonald's for the apple crisps and sampled hits like when Kanye released his new being or Macklemore made fun. After listening to those projects, I kind of took a break, a step back from SGU because I thought if I keep listening to this stuff, I'm going to get fatigued because no one with any artist listens to full albums back to back unless they are really, really true fans. I was getting a bit overwhelmed with the looped stuff. So I took a step back. And I was kind of glad I did because when I came back to SGU, I found some things were very, very interesting. This project released in 2018 is called R.I.P. Brendan Theos Jolts. When I looked into the background about it, it said that Student Gobot Union represents our first and in earnest hopes our final eulogy. Rest in peace to our beloved and departed Brendan Theos Jolts. Commemorate with us the life and death of a great man and follow in our communal journey of grief. Looking up Brendan Theos Jolts, I could find a Facebook, but there wasn't too much on him or about him. So I didn't really know what this was about. And then looking at the tracks, it seems to be an intro track, steps, maybe like the steps of grief, and then a eulogy at the end. So I was like, okay, things have taken a turn to something a bit more serious. You can see how confused I was. In some ways, some parts of that album were sounding quite serious, and then other parts just seemed almost, some parts were just, I mean, so I didn't know what to think. Didn't know whether this was serious or not. And I think that's the whole point of Student Go But Union is to not be serious. Then in the same year, we had an album called Grant's Greatest Hits, which was kind of a greatest hits. It had some music from previous projects, with some new projects as well. Peel back the Iron Curtain and take a beat at the legacy of DJ Grant and some of his favorite tracks that he's provided SGU over its long history. When I read that, then I thought, hang on, is SGU more than one person and DJ Grant is just one from SGU? I don't know. And then it went on to Eric's Greatest Hits, which wasn't a Greatest Hits album because all the songs on it weren't hits that would be on before. They were completely new things. And it was at this point that I realized that I wasn't actually using my microphone, I was using my laptop microphone, so sorry for that. But switching over to my cool mic, and also switching over to SGU's Honeymoon Bangers. Look at that album art, you've got Yoshi taking an egg dump on a bed, and it says, get down and dirty with SGU's hottest bangers on your special day, happy honeymoon. And it's just four tracks. Hey y'all. I think you get the point with this one. There seems to be like a concept going on here though. This one's called The Moment, you can imagine what that's about. And then, Covid hit. And as you can imagine, SGU's output of music increased quite dramatically. We had an EP in the April of 2020 called Crust World Tour. Really like the album art here, it's just a short EP. Quite like this one actually. This one was nice. This one's called Puke Cumbers, apparently a lost track. <laughs> we also had a presidential campaign album. I was appreciating, although I was getting quite fatigued with the looped stuff that was going on, there were moments and tracks that were that stood out to me. I did like when there was a concept being followed, for example, the 2020 campaign had lots of samples from presidents and people running for president and whatnot. Yeah, Steve. Minecraft is it's different. It's, I'm just no joking because it most of it Minecraft isn't about is presidents. <laughs> this is about see? Minecraft. Minecraft pretty much sucks. By the way, the um the Steve Ooh appears a lot more frequently in the recent albums too. Seems to enjoy that sample. Oh. Time to take a piss. I don't know. I don't know, okay? I just don't know, guys. We even have an election after party in 2020, continuing the political theme that we heard from the previous album. I wonder how Michael would take this. 
to live the fantasy. Are you messaging my girl or yum? It's just Are a random garble of samples. I spent a long time listening to this, guys. A very long time. But all jokes aside, I can appreciate its experimental methods and I can appreciate the effort that goes into making these interesting, funny tracks. It sounds like someone having a laugh making music. The turnaround is very quick for making this music. It sounds like someone just having a lot of fun mixing, sampling things and putting them together. And as a music producer, that looks like a lot of fun. And I think I spend so much time trying to do serious songs, doing things seriously. This is just perfectly fun. We've got an album which has got uh, Matthew Perry on it and it's called Cringela Bing's Tower of Babel Blade Bail Cringela Bing's Tower of... I uh, don't know, I'm not going to finish. And the premise is, if a book falls open, you begin at the middle of a story. Do you choose to go back and learn your beginnings or do you just trust in others to fill in the gaps for you? In an effort to connect with today's millennial population, we've included a digital experience to accompany this album. Oh, now I've heard some great May the Lord rest your weary soul, cringe living, let him rip. That must have been written after the fact because this was released in 2020 and Matthew Perry died in 2023. That little bit must have been added after the fact. One of my favorite songs from this is called What If The Pope Blasted Sig? Huh? What if the Pope blasted Sigs, huh? What if he like to get a little geeked off tobacco? Huh? I don't know what this the reference. Like the blast six, but huh? It sounds like what some guy running after Pope? someone asking them continuously like the what if the Pope blasted six the and it's just it's a funny premise sick Pope sick Pope sick Pope. Pope yeah I love it this trash just screaming it's called scream core interlude and also on the 25th of December 2020 that's right there's a lot from 2020 we had a Christmas album SGU's meaning of Christmas and on this project do you think the creative intentions change does it become more warm and Christmassy? See for yourself. So we're gonna head down to Richard Rot, see if I can find one for her. Okay, well I uh I just never wanted it to the hair. Feeling in sales for a red hair, glowing red hair, glowing red. This was mostly just a straight rip of uh what's it, Santa Baby? Are we done the Christmas day? I don't know. Teach me how so. to understand Christmas. Be holly jolly. We focus on the reason for the season. The lyrics are different. 2021, we have an album called SGU Summer. And I have to say, SGU's best work has to be the last two albums for me. It seems to be a bit more thought, perhaps care being put into some of the music. And it can sound pretty good at times. How cool is this? Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of weird filler. I'm just showing you some of the highlights here. We wrap up SGU's discography with Holly's 26th birthday spectacular, the second of the birthday projects in the discography. And it goes pretty hard at times. Never thought I'd fall in love with a big green I managed to get a feature with Drake. I mean, that's pretty good. Are you gonna cry? So there you have it, SGU's discography, only available on Bandcamp with some things thrown in on YouTube. I will link it down below. My thoughts on the discography? Well, I'm not gonna class it as standard music. I'm not going to rate it compared to other musical forms and popular music and even independent music that I've heard on this channel. I'm going to rate it as its own art piece and its own sort of interesting world that it lives in. If I had to give it a rating, I wouldn't. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to give SGU a rating. I'm not going to say that I like it. I'm not going to say that I dislike it. There are times when I like things more and I think that's because of my generally modern minded musical sensibilities pick up on the things that sound more like a song. But I did enjoy the weird, funny stuff. It's just listening to a lot of it at once isn't as enjoyable because 
you get the joke and then you get the joke again and then you get the joke a hundred times more so i wouldn't recommend diving into the entire discography i'd recommend listening to some projects and dipping in and out of the sgu's back catalog i would also recommend the more recent projects some of the songs appear to be better connected have more of a kind of structure to them that i enjoyed so yeah i would recommend the more recent stuff but i actually like the first ever project which was in 1996 allegedly i think for some of the projects you have to get the joke you have to be maybe a millennial to get a lot of the references but it's enjoyable it was interesting and i do not regret spending the last few weeks listening to and absorbing sgu's discography so yeah this has been an interesting deep dive. Let me know in the comments what you think of the music. Let me know what you're going to do. Are you going to dip into Bandcamp and listen to some of this music? Do let me know in the comments, guys. And remember, in a world where everyone wants to be heard and no one's doing the listening, be the one that does the listening. Goodbye, I guess. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, join the members club. You get like perks and stuff, and uh, it's fun. So yeah, and go on my channel and click on the member bit or the join page or something. It doesn't work on iPhone for some reason. I don't know. Bye.